Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to share my project, which is repurposing this children's board book into a journal using a lot of my paper scraps, including tissue paper and book pages. And I'm just showing you some of the scraps that I've pulled out to use, to possibly use. I have way too many, of course, <laughs> to, that I'll be using, but you know, I like to have choices and I have, you know, about a million scrap papers, give or take a few. So um, I first um, learned this idea from a series of videos and they're free to, um, to watch. They are posted by Drew Steinbrecher and I will post the link to his videos down below. Um, I first learned of this on Instagram um, about his videos and since I already had these um, dollar store board books that I had bought quite a while ago with the idea to do something with them, this was the perfect project to to do. So I'm showing you that I am tearing the pieces of papers and I'm cutting some into strips of different different widths um, because I'm following fairly closely to his videos. Since this is the first time I've done this, I didn't want to venture too far <laughs> away from his lessons, you know, first time and all. So before and while I'm doing that, um, I'm just cutting the strips down. I wanted to say a great big thank you to everyone that watched my video from last week. My goodness, I had so much support, so much, co so many comments, so many lovely people from Nina's channel came over and watched my video. And um, I just really, really appreciate it. It was very overwhelming. I did not expect that big a response, but it, I mean, it was great. It was amazing. So thank you so much. I hope you like this video too. And as much fun as I had, uh, covering for Nina along with Anne from Curious Moon Designs. Um, I'm really happy that Nina's coming back next week. I can't wait to see her um, videos again on Sunday mornings. I love doing that. So um, I forgot to say that, yes, I'm partner. I'm also uh, not the only one covering for Nina and Anne with Curious Moon Designs, which I will link below, is also doing a project and a video this week. So be sure and watch her video. Um, she's very talented and very creative. So I'm arranging my strips of paper, as you can see. Um, just uh, no rhyme or reason, really, just trying to see what I think looks good. Again, this is a matter of of uh, taste so what looks good to me may not look good to you and so on but um you know as i have the strips there already so it's just a matter of picking the ones i want to use and i'm trying to make a little mess there with the matte medium i'm using to glue the papers um of course that i have to make a mess when i work on a project so um I'm using matte medium, which I think I failed to say earlier, under and on top of the papers because that, first of all, that's the way Drew did it in his videos. And also because um, matte medium is a good base in case I want to add more to the pages on top of, uh, you know, my my collaged strips. So um, if you didn't want to use matte medium, I'm sure you could use a glue stick or other glue that you like to use. So when you're gluing your papers, it's important to stay away from the center of the two pages or the gutter it's called, I believe, um, because that can add to the bulk of your book and make it harder to close. And also I've had um, when I've glued pages in the center like that, they do sometimes tend to tear. So um, in, after we I glued down all the papers on these two pages, I'll be gluing some tissue paper in the middle, which is lighter weight and works better. I'm trying to straighten out or flatten out my papers with my hotel key card. I still have a little bit of wrinkling there, as you can see. But that doesn't really bother me. I've said before many times, I'm not into perfection. I'm kind of, um, I don't know. I, d I don't know what to call myself, crafter, artist, whatever kind of person that 
just kind of goes goes with the flow. I don't plan a lot ahead of time and I just like to work like that and um it's just fun for me. Um and it's everything always turns out fine in the end. Sometimes I have to work a little harder and sometimes I have to cover things up that I don't like, but for the most part it all works out and I just really enjoy it that way. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of uh flying by the seat of my pants and recording and gluing papers and hoping for the best. Um I I have a lot of glue there, so I really need to use my hotel key card to flatten out the papers, and I'm trying to be a little more careful than I was on the first page. It's trying to, I think, move a little too quickly there to start off with. So I'm just going to show you the first couple of pages and then the start of the next page because it's pretty much the same process, but I I just wanted to show you how to go about it. And then you follow the same process for the rest of the pages. And because it's a small little board book, it doesn't take long to decorate this one. Now, if you, uh, one thing too I wanted to say, I tried to pick um, tissue paper to use in the center that was a little bit transparent so that it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't cover up too much of the painted papers. I wanted to say that a lot of these papers I use are gel prints that I made uh, uh, quite a while ago. And some of the gel prints aren't even that pretty, but when you tear them into strips like that, they work out pretty, pretty well. So if you don't have, uh, I'm, I have to dry all this and then I will trim the edges there, as you can see. So if you don't have gel prints, you can use magazine uh, pages, you can use book pages, um, wrapping paper is another uh, thing that would look nice on here if you have a lot of wrapping paper. Um, with the holidays coming up, if you have Christmas wrapping paper, which a lot of us have a ton of it, that would be a cute book with all Christmas paper, different um, different patterns, different papers. Anyway, I'm trimming up the edges with my scissors and um, the edges are not, uh, they're a little raggedy in some places. I mean, not bad, but in the videos that I watched, he will trim these pages with a craft knife and make them a lot more precise. But I chose to just use my scissors to make it a little bit easier. And um, it works out fine, as I said before. <laughs> So uh, I put some deli paper there just to keep my pages from sticking in case they weren't completely dry. And I'm going to start the next page. And I'll, I'll show you the start of this. And then, again, I'll do the rest off camera because it's the exact same procedure over and over again. Um, that paper right there I made from a book page that I just painted blue and then stamped with white on top of it. So you can make your own kind of papers like that, any style that you want to. And I'm trying to move fairly quickly so, so I don't overthink. And here is my book. I love the way it turned out. I love the eclecticness and the bright patterns. Now you can see that the book um, opens up a little, doesn't lay flat. So the technique that Drew teaches is to do, this is why you do the cover last, which I failed to mention before. Um, he trims the spine, cuts the spine there with a craft knife but I'm having trouble as you can see and I think it's because this is a very inexpensive um, book from the dollar store you can see what a mess <laughs> but you know what there's almost always a fix for things so I end up just taking off the whole spine and um, trimming it up a little bit neater you'll see that and then I'm going to glue some masking tape to create a new spine and that's similar to what Drew does in his videos, um, but he doesn't take off the whole spine. But this works out fine in the end. Um, and, you know, hopefully I'll maybe get some better board books later on and try this again, and I'm sure it'll work a lot better. Um, I have to glue a little bit there, this two pages that are coming apart a little bit. 
and then I get the masking tape out. I'm going to glue that down, as you'll see. I use extra glue because, um, you know, I don't want the masking tape to come off. And even though masking tape works well, I, I just feel like it needs that little extra glue, especially on a, like a slick sort of board book like that. So I'm going to tape that on there and go on with the next step. So I'm basically creating kind of a new spine and a wider spine. So my book lays flat now. And um, the next step will be putting some tissue paper over the spine. Now, again, this is following the videos. He recommends using tissue paper um, on the spine to make it, you know, easier to open and close your book. Um, I think that, um, you know, other papers might work well, or maybe even fabric, but again, I'm following, <laughs> I'm following his videos. So I'm going to stick with what he does. I have this Tim Holtz tissue paper, which is pretty old. I've had it for many years. I don't know if they make it anymore, but it works really well for this particular project, I think. So I'm going to attach the numbers, I think work better, um, with the matte medium. I don't think I said this before. If you don't have matte medium or don't want to use it, you can use a uh, glue stick or another craft glue or really any glue that you prefer. I am sticking with, in this project, I was sticking with the matte medium to follow his video more closely, as I've said several times already. <laughs> so I'm just trimming down that uh, tissue paper a little bit to make it a little bit easier to work with, and then I'm going to glue it down with the matte medium. I'm trying to decide how to decorate my cover, because after I glue down the tissue paper, I'm going to work on that. Now, I decided again with so that I wouldn't overthink and you know try every combination under the sun that I would move forward with my project and use those two pieces that you saw on my front cover and then work from there with and you'll see that that works out fine and I end up decorating it just a little bit more so the other thing I wanted to say is the one paper that you saw there, which I will use on the cover, is um, from another prompt of Nina's a while ago. I think it's been a year or two, maybe more, or maybe more than a year, <laughs> less than two, I don't know, um, that she had a prompt of making papers, marbled papers with... Um, with uh, shaving cream and paints or inks I can't remember so I did that prompt it was a lot of fun a little messy but really fun and got some cool papers and what I do is I just make copies of the papers to use in various projects of mine so that's what that is it's just a copy of my marbled paper made with the shaving cream um and I think it's a beautiful color. It's again, colorful. I'm trying to be very colorful in this project because <laughs> I usually do vintage and more muted colors. Um, and I love, co I love bright colors. I just don't always feel comfortable using them for some reason. I do, uh, my preferred style, I guess, is vintage. So again, I'm looking at it. <laughs> And I'm wondering if I should do something else. And then I decide, nope, I'm going to keep go keep moving forward. Just do it. It's just a little project for myself. I don't have to obsess over <laughs> the cover, which I ge generally do obsess over my journal covers so much. Um, there's that pretty paper. And then I glued down the um, picture of the threads is actually from an old decorating book I had. I don't remember the name of it, but it had these two pages that had these beautiful threads and I tore them out of the book um, and with some other images and then ditched the book. So I don't remember what it's called. But if you have images like that from books or magazines, those would work great for a project like this. So once I glue those down, I'm going to work on the back cover and then I will 
um, trim, dry it all, trim it. And so I did all that. <laughs> and um, I decided when I looked at my cover that I wanted to put some black there on the edge. And I have this washi tape and it's a little thicker than I want. So I just cut it and I'm, I cut a piece for the front and now I'm cutting a piece for the back and I will attach that. I'm showing you my pages again because I love them so much. I think I forgot that I already showed you those pages. It's the next day now. So I, uh, I let everything dry really, really well. And there's a little corner that is coming undone so I just used a little bit of glue there to attach that and I really wanted to I could have left the cover just like that it looks fine but I really wanted to um, decorate it more so I went through my stuff and I came across these pieces that I put together and they I think work really great um, it was just a happy coincidence <laughs> I'm trying to glue that uh, that washi tape on there and um, so I put those all those pieces together. I just glued everything. I sewed around the tag because I do like a bit of sewing in my journals whenever possible. And then I just attach that to the front of the journal. And I really like the way that turned out. Okay, I have glued everything down and then to the tag. And now I'm just going to glue the tag onto the front of my journal. And that will complete the project for now. As I said before, I might do some, in fact, I think I probably will do some other things inside of the journal. I don't know what yet, but <laughs> I'll get to that later. And I really like the way this turned out. I love the bright, beautiful colors. I love the bright, eclectic pages. Um, I really enjoyed this project and I'll be back for a little wrap up in just a moment. I'm back because I made another little board book. I couldn't help myself. I actually bought three board books at the dollar store a while ago before I even knew what I wanted to do with them. And so um, I still have one more that's a little bit more challenging with the shapes, but it'll, it'll be fun to work on that one sometime in the future. And this one had a rounded shape like this. I thought it would be a little easier than this one to do right now, real quick. This was actually quicker than the other one because I didn't have to use pieces. I just attached a piece of card stock to each page, then trimmed it, edged it in brown distress ink, and put washi tape in the center of each page. So I used this paper from the same paper pad so they would all coordinate. And I think it turned out really nice. And I put a little pocket here. I didn't sew it. I sewed the paper and then glued it on. And that just to show that you can decorate the pages really simply. I can add other stuff to the pages as well. And I decorated the cover with a little um, piece from that same paper pad and some cheesecloth, a little metal emblem, a little metal number from a Tim Holtz package, some eyelets too to have a closure. And so those are my two projects, um, a more colorful kind of book, and then this one more vintage, kind of more in my style, but I love both of them. So I hope you enjoyed my projects for this week, and thanks for watching. See you next time.